Hello class, I know this has been a long time coming and that you guys have not yet got to interact with me face to face or heard from me directly, so this is an attempt to remedy, remedy that. First thing, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and then we're going to go on and talk about the Great Awakening and the Enlightenment and hopefully that you guys can better understand these two crucial topics which are important to understanding the events of the American Revolution, which we'll talk about later this week. Okay, so... I am a fourth-year PhD student here at LSU in the history department. I am originally from Springfield, Illinois, home place of Abraham Lincoln, yay. Uh, my primary uh, historical interests are in 18th century U.S. history. Mostly I look at the history of colonial education. Uh, I look at how that led to the development of the first political class in America, especially with the likes of Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, James Madison, James Monroe, a lot of your future presidents. I like to look at how education and politics intertwined in revolutionary America, and that so far is the goal and topic of my dissertation, which I'm currently now writing. So, with that out of the way, let's move on to something more germane to you guys. Now, recently we've been talking about the 18th century colonial America, and, and in more recent times we're going to be talking about the lead up to the American Revolution. These two topics, the Great Awakening and the Enlightenment, while not directly tied to the causes of the American Revolution, they are important to understanding how Americans got to the point of wanting to rebel against the mother country. Both of these events would lead Americans to question authority for the first time. They had been taught to obey the king and parliament, and these two events led them to question traditional authority. So with that being said, let's get into it. Firstly, we'll talk about the Great Awakening. Now, the Great Awakening began unexpectedly in Puritan churches in New England in the 1730s, and then it would later spread in the 1740s and 1750s to Presbyterians, Baptists, Methodists, and the rest of the 13 colonies. Now, Itinerant preachers abandoned traditional sermons in favor of outside meetings where they could whip their congregations into an emotional frenzy to reveal evidence of saving grace. Now, more old school Puritans definitely had a problem with this. Most of them saw itinerant preachers as people who were deluding the senses of the people, that people who were, in a sense, almost like con artists, not in the typical sense that we think of it today, but that's definitely how they would have viewed these itinerant preachers. Now, there was a divide in religion by the 1740s and 1750s between what we call the New Lights, or those who believed in the revivals of the Great Awakening, and the old lights who thought it was deluded nonsense. The old lights seemed to prevail in terms of numbers, but the new light um, thoughts were more believed and more prevalent throughout the colonies, if that makes sense. These itinerant preachers like George Whitfield and Jonathan Edwards were seen by the old lights as people who did not truly adhere to the Puritan ideals set forth by John Winthrop and the early Puritans who moved here to the United States or at the time where the colonies. Old Lights saw the ideas being preached by these itinerant preachers as dangerous to traditional authority. They saw it as going against the establishment, which in our case was heavily, heavily looked down upon. The people who these itinerant preachers were attempting to whip up into this frenzy were 
the ones who the old lights were worried about who would be seen as deluded by these new itinerant preachers. Now, as to what the Great Awakening achieved, it didn't really achieve much in terms of religious, in, in terms of changing religious orthodoxy. However, what it did do was it led people to finally be able to question traditional authority. It led people to finally say, hmm, maybe these people don't know what they're talking about all the time. Maybe these people only want to keep us in the dark and keep us in our proper places in society. So these, these views were carried over into the revolutionary era where colonists were finally able to use what they had learned in the Great Awakening to challenge the authority of the British Empire, specifically that of the King and that of Parliament. Now then, let's move on to the Enlightenment, also known as the quote-unquote Age of Reason. The most significant of the new European ideas circulating in the 18th century America grew out of a burst of innovative intellectual activity known as the Enlightenment, a breakthrough in understanding human society and the natural world. The ideas of the Enlightenment undermined the authority of the monarchy and the church and paved the way for political revolutions of the 18th and 19th centuries, specifically the American Revolution and later the French Revolution. The people of the Enlightenment, those like Isaac Newton, those like John Locke and others, saw traditional church power as the problem in both Europe and in the colonies. They wanted to, they wanted people to look more at reason, to look more at observation of the natural world rather than relying on religious leaders to tell you what to believe and how to believe it. This leads us to something called deism, which was embraced by most of the founding fathers, including Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, and Benjamin Franklin. They rejected revelation as a source of religious knowledge, aka the Bible, and they asserted that reason and observation of the natural world were sufficient to establish the existence of God. Now, many people have declared a lot of the founding fathers to be atheists. This is a, this is not true. Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Franklin, and the others definitely believed in God. Some of them were religious, some of them more than others. But mostly what these people believed was that religion should not be used to Religion shouldn't be used to govern. Religion shouldn't be used as an excuse to make people blindly follow authority. People like Jefferson believed more in natural reason. They believed more in science. They believed more in the ideas of the rational mind, more so than they believed in revelations in the Bible or the authority of traditional old light ministers. That brings us to the ideas of John Locke, which were instrumental in the fomentation of American revolutionary thought. And also, he was probably the most well-known Enlightenment thinker in revolutionary America. John Locke believed that people were not born with innate ideas, that people did not have beliefs from birth. Rather, people's beliefs and knowledge were determined by experience derived from the senses, hearing, smelling, touching, tasting, seeing that kind of stuff. Now, John Locke wrote something called Two Treatises on Government. He, here he posited ideas about natural rights, including life, liberty, and property, which was changed to the pursuit of happiness in Jefferson's Declaration of Independence. A lot of the ideas of John Law can be found in Jefferson's writings in the Declaration, as well as other founding era documents. 
Again, John Locke is telling people to question traditional authority. This stuff of the Enlightenment combined with what we talked about in the Great Awakening served to allow American colonists for the first time to be able to question those who were traditionally seen as powerful or in charge. They no longer saw the king, they no longer saw parliament, they no longer saw their local religious and political leaders as infallible. That, that they were allowed to finally question the authority of these people led them to do what they did in the 1760s and 1770s that led up to the American Revolution. Now this is crucial later on when we talk about the causes and consequences of the American Revolution. The Great Awakening and the Enlightenment were not direct, directly implicated in the causes of the American Revolution, but their ideas led to things that we will later talk about in terms of the American Revolution, especially with the Declaration of Independence. Now, I hope you guys learned something from this. If you guys have any questions about what we talked about here or what was said in the readings or in the PowerPoints, feel free to contact me, email and we can talk about that more in great detail. I hope to post more of these videos throughout the semester so that you guys can interact with me, although you guys can't really say anything back, but that you guys see me and you guys see that I am, in fact, hoping to instill historical knowledge within you guys so that we don't repeat the same mistakes in our country again. See you guys next time. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Bye.